Well, this year we expect the economy to grow further. On the external uncertainties, the geopolitics ha handover is still there, but with interest rate expected to come down, I think the global demand will come back. And over the past few years, we have been trying very hard to explore new markets and attracting new capital and new talent. Our, our assessment is that this year, the export situation will stabilize. Our consumption will continue to grow with the improvement in the uh, connectivity and transport facilities with the mainland and the international world. So consumption will be the major handle in the short term. And with this, in the medium term, it is attracting more enterprises, talents and capital. And we have seen piecing results over the past year in terms of enterprises over 40 such strategic enterprises have promised or already settled into Hong Kong, uh, bringing additional investment to the order of four, over 40 billion, creating over 13,000 jobs. In terms of talents, we have approved more than 100 thousand applications, uh, a quite substantial number of them have come and these are young, highly educated, high income earner talents. So uh, this would be the impetus for our economic growth in the short to medium term. China's sluggish economic recovery together with its property crisis have been a bit of a drag on Hong Kong and we just got an update this morning with the government work report from Li Chang. China's target for 2024 growth is around 5%. He goes on to say that achieving this year's economic growth target will not be easy. Can you comment on this growth target of around 5% and the implications for Hong Kong? Well, you know, China is a huge economy, given its size, 5% is a huge amount. I think this is attainable, although it's not easy. But when you look at the external environment, uh, we expect the export situation of the mainland will improve, uh, particularly into developing Asia. And considering over the past few years, because of geopolitics, actually the industry chain, the supply chain, have been realigned. So now it is not just manufacturing in China and export to the US or European market, but China plus the develop, developing Asia. That is a substantial change. And on the other hand, developing Asia, ASEAN in particular, is growing very fast. And the population is young. So this represents also a huge market for China's export. And in addition, China is trying very hard to stimulate domestic consumption, this will be the major uh, engine of growth as well.